Here's some demos on the center of mass. You have to put the center of mass right over the pivot. No torque is produced. But we can find it another way. I can put my two fingers out like this and just start moving closer and closer and closer. And they're naturally going to find the center of mass. Now, even if I keep one hand still and just bring the other one over, I'm not moving my left hand. It still works. Now, how is that? When the meter stick is more on one side than the other, this is the heavy end. And there's more friction. And it drags the meter stick along until this side becomes the heavy end. And then it drags the meter stick back. So it's friction that's making this happen. You can even have somebody try this at home and tell them to shut their eyes. It still works. And here's another demo on center of mass. Uh, it's supposed to be like an optical illusion, sort of, uh, where we have something that seems to have all its weight out here and it should fall, but really it's countered by something heavy on the other side that's close to the pivot, the pivot being right here. I'm using a washer, but the, the classic move is to use a half dollar. Uh, you can do this with two forks as well on a coin, and you just get it to balance like that. So what we're saying is that the center of mass is right on that pivot. And if I threw this thing like a Frisbee, it would be rotating right about that center of mass right here. Some time ago, I went to Williamsburg and I was in a furniture store and they had this crazy piece of wood here. And I said, oh my goodness, what is this? And I realized that it was a wine holder. Now there's an interesting example of center of mass. It doesn't look like it should be balanced. It looks like the bottle ought to maybe make it pull over this way. And certainly if you look at the wood, it looks like it's gonna fall that way. So where is the center of mass? It's right above the pivot. Now this, there's a base here that's kind of wide, so we have a little room to work with, but it's in there. And so you ask, what happens though when somebody drinks some wine? Let's find out. Okay, I've dumped out a fair amount, and it still works. Now, how's that? Well, the water is being lowered across the length of the bottle, so it doesn't shift the center of mass that much. Well, now I've taken out a lot more water, and I'm gonna put it in here. Oh, it wants to go that way. I've gotten rid of too much weight on this side. Alrighty, I fill it back up again, and we put it in here. And now you got to ask yourself, why would anybody want to store their wine bottle sideways in the first place? It has everything to do with the cork. Once you open the bottle and you pour out a glass of wine, you want to keep that cork moist. Because if it dries out, then air can go back and forth and spoil your wine. Okay, I've got a can of soda. And I have another one. And I'm just gonna balance this one right on its edge. Now, how is that possible? Well, it's gotta have something to do with center of mass. This one is opened and I have a little water in there. If I try this with a full one, the center of mass is in the middle and you can see that it's going to miss the pivot. With the water in here, the center of mass is much lower and now it goes through the pivot to balance. Well, what happens if I dump out more water? Well, the center of mass is back in the middle again because the can is the mass and it's in the middle and now it's too far to that side. Now, don't try this at home, folks. You know, you're not supposed to lean back in your chairs, but we can try this and get the balance. Oh, how do we do this? What are we doing? What's going on? Where is the center of mass? It's right over the pivot. If I fall forwards, I tuck my legs in. If I fall backwards, I shoot my legs out. And that moves the center of mass back and forth. And if you get good at it, it can really stay there. Well, that's similar to riding a bicycle. If you fell to one side or fell to the other side, the balance point is actually at the tires on the floor. So if you start to fall to the right, 
you want to steer the bicycle back underneath your center of mass. And it happens kind of naturally. As you lean to one side, the fork turns in that direction because of the angle of the fork to naturally bring you back under the center of mass. So the pivot point, the part of the tunnel, is constantly being steered underneath the center of mass. And just in case anybody wants to know, that's my steel-framed 1990 Trek 420 touring bike. I rode 100 miles on it yesterday.